Hello, and thanks for joining us for example two of the refrigeration standard tool calculator. This is a more complicated example than example one. This is for a regional refrigerated warehouse. The customer has three ammonia chillers with a total capacity of 700 tons. The facility also uh, has the benefit of having extensive uh, trending available, so you can get KW capacity, et cetera, for different uh, major components like the compressor, condenser, and evaporators. Uh, the, through an energy audit done by a PG&E engineer, there was uh, three measures that were identified for where they're saving potential at the customer site. One was floating head pressure, the second was restaging the compressors, and the third was installing VFD on the evaporator fans. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Melina to build the calculator and show you guys how to model this system in the tool. Go ahead and take it away, Melina. Thank you, Ryan. Okay, so let's see, I have one calculator open here. Um, I won't spend too much time here, but just say that this is be the landing page for the calculator and the three inputs or two inputs that we want you to to make sure that you you, you have is uh, the zip code that will determine the climate zone of the uh, of the facility and also the electric rate in this case because we only have refrigeration we don't need the gas rate you can put both of them but make sure that the zip code and the electric rate are uh, defined so we are going to add one refrigeration system for for this calculator. In this case, um, if you have been using the HVAC tool, um, you need to create one, um, you need to click in each equipment, either H, you know, air side, chiller, or hot water, but in this case for the refrigeration one, we have um, we have only one. And depending on how good your computer is, it might take a little bit longer. Mine. It struggles with this uh, with this calculator a little bit, but I know that some others it's much faster. So uh, we have everything that we need right now. So we have three different tabs. This is the calculation tab. This is the one that we will be using to uh, define our inputs. We have a compressor curve input that uh, will help us that, uh, define the compressor uh, curves, and then we have uh, an an engineering report tab that is kind of like a summary of all the energy efficiency measures that we have found. Uh, in this case, because we are going to be looking at a detailed calculation, uh, we will be using all three tabs. If you don't have a lot of data and this is a small project and uh, you want to do just a quick uh, calculation of the energy efficiency savings, then you won't be using the compressor curve input. But let's see. First thing that you have to do when you are uh, looking at the refrigeration calculator, you have to define the data type. That's, don't forget uh, to do that. In this case, uh, we have two different options, detailed and simple. And because this customer has a lot of trend data and the system is a little bit bigger, uh, we are going to use the detailed uh, data type. For the HVAC calculator, you need to define this for each measure, but in the refrigeration uh, calculator, you define it once, and that will be the same for all type of measures. So in this case, we have an ammonia refrigerant type system. The condenser approach temperature is 12. The condenser type is evaporative, and the majority of the load we are going to say it's weather load in this case because we are using details. This is not that important, but just uh, you know, just just to make sure that we have defined everything. One quick thing is that for every single calculator, make sure that you have all the green uh, inputs defined. Okay, uh, that will determine what your you know what your baseline is. So there are three compressors in this case that they have a total capacity of 700 tons, and I'm going to define them right here. The capacity of the first one is 250 tons, then there is a second one with 200 tons, and the third one has also 250 tons capacity. And the horsepowers are 400, 300, and 400. Then next, we are going to define the condenser fan motors. In this case, we have two condenser fan motors, and each is five horsepower. So 
I'm going to just define them. The load factor is 80% and the efficiency is 90% in this case. And both are the same, so I'm going to do this quickly. For the evaporator, uh, we are going to say that we have, um, we have 10 total fans, uh, but we have two different types of evaporator. One is 5 horsepower and the other one is 6 horsepower. So we are going to define this and we have 5 of each. And the load factor is going to be the same as the condensers. Okay, so next, let's define, let's make sure that all the, all the green inputs are defined. So what is the minimum condensing set point for this, um, for this system? So the PN engineer went out there and found out that it was 125. The condenser fan BFDs are controlled with BFDs in this case. They already have that. And they, f they don't have fluorine head pressure that is fixed because that's one of the measures that the engineer found when they went out there. The suction pressure is 40, that's the average, and the compressor staging, when the engineer went, when the engineer went out there, found out that uh, compressor one was the trim, the first trim compressor, compressor two was the base load, and compressor three was the uh, trim, the second trim comp compressor. And this is interesting because the compressor uh, type of compressors is that the compressor one is a screw compressor, compressor two is a BFD, and compressor three is a screw compressor. And the evaporators are on off because we are recommending BFDs on them. And the minimum speed is, of course, 100% because we don't have BFDs. Um, Okay, so let's remember what kind of measures we found. So we found flooring head pressure, staging the compressors, and installing BFDs on the evaporators. Okay, so let's go to the, to the flooring head pressure. In this case, this is going to cost $15,000, and we are proposing that the proposed will have flooring head pressure with a minimum condensing set point of 110. And what we need to do is that we need to enable this measure here. Okay, and uh, next we said that we were going to change the staging. So it doesn't make any sense in this case that the BFD compressor is base loaded. We want that one to be the trim compressor. So we are going to enable this measure, and this is going to cost $10,000. And what we are going to do is that the first compressor is going to be base loaded, the second compressor will be uh, trimmed, and the second compressor will be, um, will be the second trim. And we are also going to install BFDs, which we will assume that it's going to cost $20,000. And so the proposed is going to be BFDs and with a minimum speed of 40%. But I want to show you something else. So in this case, we uh, defined that, these, uh, that the calculator type or the, the, the way we are going to calculate our savings is by, the, by using the detail, detail calculator. And that entails that we will have to enter 8760 uh, information for the compressors. And we did it that way. Uh, we created an 8760 calculator so that uh, we can normalize whatever data we get from the customer uh, per week, per month, per weather, per whatever uh, normalization makes sense for, for this customer. We wanted to make sure to leave it open uh, so that engineers uh, were not restricted for a type of normalization. So you capture whatever information you capture about the compressors, uh, normalize it in a different Excel file, and then you can input it here. And this information is used for um, knowing, for calculating what is the load per hour per each compressor. So in this case, we already done all this work. We already have, um, we already normalized the, um, the KW use per compressor per, per hour of the year, and also the, we also have information about the saturated uh, suction temperatures. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to post it in the calculator. And it might take a little bit long because it's a lot of data, okay? Okay, there we go. So now we have how 
the we have defined how the um, how the um, compressors operate for for the baseline, and because this is the detailed uh, analysis, we want to define what is the compressor curves for each compressor. So basically, go to um, go to the manufacturers of the uh, compressors, and you need to get the following information: the slide valve position the saturated condensing temperature, the KW for the compressor, the capacity, and the saturated suction temperature. So we need that for each of the compressors. Don't worry, we have put plenty of, uh, plenty of space here to enter information, but you don't have to fill each of, the, each of the rows here. If you only have 70 rows of information, that's fine. You can leave the rest blank. So in this case, I've already done that for, uh, for our three compressors. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy this information and see how we don't have everything filled up. So let me. OK, so this is copied. And I'm going to input it in the compressor curve input. And let's see. So bear with me. OK, that was pretty fast. Okay, so this has made that we have calculated some inputs here for our compressor. So make sure that you have this information uh, here for your detailed uh, inputs. If you are using the simple inputs, forget about the compressor curve input because we do have some average uh, compressor um, curves already set up in the in the calculator. So at this point, what we are going to do is that we are going to calculate the measures and we are going to see how much energy we are saving for them. And it might take around 30 to 40 seconds, so we are going to pause it here, but just uh, be aware that it will take a little bit to calculate this. Okay, so let's review the energy efficiency savings that we are getting. So remember, we have three measures. We have floating head pressure, we have staging optimization, and we have evaporator BFD. And Brian, I think that we did something wrong because in the evaporator BFD, I don't see any savings. So let's review what happened. Maybe we didn't enable the measures. Let's check. And if, yeah, exactly. So see, when you don't enable the, the, the measure, these inputs, the proposed inputs, are ignored by the calculator, and it just uses the baseline, so basically we just didn't make any changes and that's why the savings are zero. So we are going to enable this measure and we are going to run the calculations again. Okay, so this was extremely fast for us because we paused it. Um, don't worry if your calculation takes around 30 to 40 seconds uh, to go through all the measures. Uh, in this case, we pause it just so that you are not bored, and we do this quickly. So just let's review now that we enable the evaporator uh, measure. Now we are getting some savings here. So now we can review our results. Just remember that um, the, the savings and the consumptions are broken down by uh, equipment type. So this is the compressor, this is the condenser, and the evaporator. And as expected, the fluorine head pressure is giving us positive savings on the compressor as negative on the, on the condenser and the staging optimization is giving us savings only on the compressor. And the evaporator BFDs, they, we have only savings on the evaporator. So, so far, we have uh, the right information. So we are going to calculate now the, uh, the incentives. So we have 15 cents for, for, um, for the flooring head pressure. We are going to use 8 cents for the staging, and we are going to use 8 cents also for the for the um, evaporators. Okay, so now that we have calculated our uh, incentives, we can go back to the engineering report, and this will be this will help us um, summarizing the the energy savings for um, for our uh, customers. So you just need to uh, click on create report. And that will give you both uh, a summary of the equipment that you are modeling and also the energy savings for the um, 
for each of the measures that we have um, that we have modeled in the in the calculator, as well as a financial analysis based on the estimated incentives and the um, and the utility cost over here. Um, and also, it will give us an idea of uh, what kind of MMB it will be required for these measures. So I hope that this was useful, and let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.